Um, when I was 13 years old, my, my grandmother actually moved on to a golf course called Hallam and Golf Course in Tallahassee, Florida. At 14, I was I went through a like a tough time because so I had just dropped out of school. I was depressed, you know, I had no reason to live. You know, my mom and I wasn't getting along. I was outside swinging my stick one day because I always sat on my balcony just watching the golfers go by, but you know, never had access to the golf course. Well, I was playing golf one day and um, I was on hole number three. And I saw this little kid swinging a stick, or I thought it was a golf club on the side of uh, where the apartments are on hole number four. And I walked up to him, it was a school day. And I, I, I got closer, I realized it wasn't a golf club, it was a stick he was swinging. He had a good, good little swing with a stick. And I said, why aren't you in school? And he said, I'm homeschooled. And actually, they, at the time, they dropped out of school, but he told me he was homeschooled. And I asked him where he lived, and he told me he lived with his grandma up in the apartments. And I asked him if he wanted to hit a real bucket of balls, and his face just lit up. And he said, yeah. Then she said, well, I got something better for you to do. So she sent me to the range with a nine iron and a bucket of balls. She said, you know, uh, you can sit here and hit some range balls if you want. And I went upstairs and asked my grandmother, and my grandmother said, yeah, that was fine. So I walked about 700 yards to the clubhouse and just kept coming back, kept coming back. And Jan August said, you know what, I'll charge you a dollar a day to play golf. And that was how I had access to the golf course. Um, I literally practiced golf from sun up to sundown. He, he, he grew up here, basically, and the, and the people here helped raise him, you know? You, you know, I was very fortunate and blessed to meet a lady like Jan August. And if it wasn't for her, and if it wasn't for golf, and it wasn't for the golfing community in Tallahassee and the access that I had to the golf course and to meeting these these amazing people that came into my life and mentored me, then, you know, I, I, I honestly don't know where I would be. Weather app said like 44. Yeah, it's kind of right on that border of where you want to wear long johns. Yeah. That I don't have. I think we could golf in this weather. This isn't bad. And now yeah. If the wind picks up, that could stick. That could be interesting. Could be, could be a problem. Now I can't remember what I was here for. It's been a long year, man. We didn't have much budget. Uh, we had, I think, $6, so breakfast was out. Well, first time in a couple of these straps. When we were trying to get to the bottom of it after Calera, because we were like doing the True tally, like, where'd our money go? We got kind of we got kind of taken to the cleaners a little bit by uh, the Narc and Jay. I know. Got behind the eight ball, and they they drained the budget a little bit on some some cold beer bets. But you know that motivates us to play right. well, and we just didn't. <laughs> how'd, didn't you play, play how'd you play? How'd play during the well, money round? I will say, <laughs> and no, no, I will say, made a big put on eighteen that saved us. It was three, three more beers. Yeah, three <laughs> more. Cold. That could have that could have doubled our. I mean, we would have been in a really dark place. I don't know if I like this hat. Like I like the hat, but not maybe not with the outfit. I was thinking it was going to end up being more blue. Tom Kennedy hit me with a blue on black. Is like he was like, why are you wearing blue on black when we were in Ireland? And just like totally. It's the Kenny Wayne Shepherd. I always thought Kenny Wayne Shepherd was kind of a crispy look. He was like, no, you don't do that. We don't do that up here. It's unsa Well. And it just Tom kind of, had some questionable offers of, in his own right. Which he we sure did. We could take that offline. Respectfully, though, you're not Irish either. So yeah. why are you worrying about what they're doing over there? I don't know, but that always stuck with me. So I'm always like, oh, dude, I got blue on black going. Like, is that bad? It could be bad. I don't know. I think, it's a, I think you got to find out if it goes around. You got, it's a lot. You know, talk to me uh, about that last day. Going in, uh, it was, you know, we're leaving the Airbnb. It's, it's very cold. Uh, what's the mindset? Be professionals. I think mindset was uh, we have 18 more holes ahead of us. It's cold, yes. Uh, at least it wasn't raining. Thought it was gonna be a bit sloppy. No, it, it didn't feel like a chore at all. I was I was happy to, to get at it. And one of the holes was close, so we only had to play 17. I'd say very stoic, very very much a, a hood man. Do your job. 
type of day. Um, like pack a lunch business trip. Yeah. I told Randy, I think on 7 or 8T, I was like, it reminded me of football practice when you're two and six and it's November and you're playing in the freezing rain for nothing and your coaches are going to get fired and everybody's miserable. It's just lonely. Like, it's just like, it's the embodiment of lonely. Which I think fits with the strap by a little bit. I but say, I had you there, brother. I was going to say, you know, when you say all that, it, it's kind of, it, it, I'm glad we got to go through that. That's what I you mean. Know? So you like, got to embrace that. I, I, I think I'll look back on it fondly. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if I want to do it <laughs> a lot. Not a lot. Like, I don't really want to play golf this right. week. <laughs> Gosh, if this course isn't nine bucks, then you guys somehow mispaid, you're going to get you're gonna be tough. crucified. Four players. 36, so nine Booking bucks. Booking total, $36. Nine bucks each for golf. Okay, well, that's big. Yeah, that's huge. So, so, then let's, so let's take 20. that out of the budget right now. I think I was lifted up. I was really eager to meet Coach Rice, though. Let me have you start with uh, your name and occupation. Uh, Mike Rice, head men's golf coach at Florida a &M University. Coach. <laughs> coach. Coach is, coach, coach is a good guy. Coach is a great guy. Um, he helped transform my game. Uh, been my swing coach, my sometimes my mentor. You know, he helps. He helps when things go bad in school. So you know, he's he's such a great guy. Straight out of Central Casting for just a fun golf coach. Honestly, it looks like he could be a, like a community college football coach too. I was gonna say straight out of Central <laughs> Casting for a guy I'd run through a wall for. Uh, so FAMU uh, is HBCU, public uh, Florida, you know, university. Usually between ten, 000, twelve thousand. So. Not real big, but yet not too small. Um, you know, located up as you've been in Tallahassee, up on the hill. Welcome. Part of the part of the strapped uh, ethos. We're on a budget. That's how you save money. Can't take that card. Man, I like it. So, <laughs> we lost some money in the money round yesterday with Cameron. Uh oh. You can tell how much he loves the kids. I, I think like that was the one thing he said was. Had I known how rewarding it is to watch the transformation in the kids, he was like, I would have done this 20 years earlier. And I think from like a player perspective and looking at him like a coach, he doesn't take himself too seriously. And he was preaching like, end of the day, golf should be fun. And so part of my job is, yes, we have to work. And of course, we're working to get better and to compete. But he's like, it should be enjoyable along the way. And it's like, God, man, that's exactly the type of person I want to play for. What's the yardage? The yardage is uh, 50, 5,900, 5,940 from the one-ups. Oof. Coach, you ever play the one-ups? I'm not. No, I'm <laughs> not. No, it's been a while since I played out here as well, so. What would you think, honest opinion, a couple of recruits show up and, and want to play the one-ups with you? What would your first impression be? Not a recruit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> God, we were gonna see, hey, coach, you could we come play for you, but I got a, I got a fifth year eligibility still. I think. Oh, that is silly. That's perfect. I mean, fourteen of those, I would think. Yeah, let's, let's go. Come on around. Beauty. Oh, God, that's so bad. Love it. What a shot. shot. All right. Probably the best golf of his life. Oh, he's trying to impress Coach. <laughs> trying to get a look. Maybe, maybe get a look. Yeah, hold up one sec. Sorry. You're not going to shank this, right? Coach, you ever, uh, you ever see anyone take that line? That's the first. That's got to be a few yards off. Pretty good. Shot. Like under a ramp. Uh, 
Oh man, I would. I play cut, so I would see around. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough, tough ask either way. Uh, what's different about just recruiting for a an HBCU? Well, our pool is a lot smaller, you know. So when, when we talk about minority golf and, and black golfers, especially, you know, that pool of black golfers out there that, that are playing in tournaments that that playing in in higher caliber tournaments is a very small pool. HBCU golf is different. Um, there's just a sense of the sense of com camaraderie that we have is so different than it is when we go to other tournaments. And one thing I will tell you about Coach Wright, Coach is a person who knows the culture of HBCU and minority golf. I try to recruit minorities. I try to recruit, you know, black kids to, to FAMU to play golf. I mean, that's, that's to me, is what we're about. What's it like being the, the white coach of the black team? What's, what's that been like for you? I, you know, it's good because, you know, for one, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a FAMU and, you know, that's my, you know, I'm an alum. Uh, so people know me around there, which is nice. You know, it took a little while as far as other HBCUs, you know, for them to, you know, to get to know me and to know that, that I'm trying to do it the right way and I'm going to continue to try to do it the right way. I, you know, I've been around and seen some of the other coaches and, and when they look uncomfortable, but to me, this is home. I mean, this is, this is who I am. Similar to like a little bit of what we love about what we do is like it's our own little operation and he's like I do everything he's the bus driver he's does he takes recruits on tours he plans the logistics he, he literally is giving them like figuring out equipment and everything he doesn't have assistant coaches it's truly a one-man operation and he's out there giving lessons too when you see that like zoom out after five years and you see the progress like how rewarding you can tell he just takes a lot of pride in it which is Really, really fun to um, really fun to see. Really fun to hear about. And we've been able to do some good stuff here too. Um, you know, we won our first five tournaments last year of the season, so you know, we're, we're we're golfing our ball down here. I know for FAMU, some university maybe not, but for us, that was historic. You know, we've we've had a lot of talent on the team, but last year it really got to show, and uh, we were feeding off of that, man. We were getting ready to, you know, obviously head into the spring, which is our championship season. And then COVID hit, you know, and it was unfortunate for our guys, you know, especially to have a season like that. So we were looking forward to MEAC and then our minority championship, which is now called the PJ Works Championship. Uh, but COVID ended up shutting us down. So now we're here, right? Uh, he strikes me, Coach Rice strikes me as a guy that thrives in chaos. And I like people like that, unstructured environments. He's like, yeah, I've had, uh, I think he said, what do you say, eight ADs in six, six years? Six or ADs. Six, six, six ADs? Yeah. I mean, it's like, that's tough, man. That's that's the lifeblood of your program. Hopefully I'm yeah. not going to get cut or this or that. Like, say, you got incredible. that axe hanging over your head, too, where you're know, worried about the program getting cut. Uh, what's the biggest challenge in your job? Whew, man, probably resources more than anything. You know, just, you know, the one thing that I... You know, pride myself on is, is I always want to make sure that the guys have everything they need to develop and get better. And sometimes that's tough. You know, it's tough when you can't give them the resources that you know that they need to take it to the next level. For instance, short game is, is a great example. You know, if you're if you're putting on a, a 12 or 13 at a tournament, you're practicing on an eight or nine. That's that's a huge adjustment to make. So you know, even with equipment, I mean, you know, a lot a lot of the the young men that were, you know, getting in, just, they just don't have the resources to, to to purchase the equipment that's needed at D1 level. So Cam hits it probably about as far as Neil. Yeah. Where's that stack up on the team? Probably maybe I'm maybe fifth or sixth distance wise on the team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but man, he's got a great golf swing. I mean, it's it's solid. Yeah. Like he's he's hitting some solid shots. <laughs> We got to get rid of the wayward ride on that last <laughs> hole. Other than that, it's been good. Uh, Heilman struck me as a perfect place to learn the game of golf, uh, and, and a great place to enjoy it carefree with you know friends. That was originally built as a country club. It's called Winewood Country Club. Went under. City bought it. I think back in 1981. Uh, it's been a municipal course ever since. 
I, it's a it's kind of a scrappy course for scrappy players. You know, it's got some really quirky holes uh, that are a lot of fun. You know, uh, I think the new equipment, you know, makes it a little tight in places. Right? You can, if you if you send one flailing off in the other hole, you got to kind of get your four ready to yell. Uh, Jan Auger, who's the director of golf out there, is just does a super job. I'm Jan Auger, and I'm the director of golf for the city of Tallahassee. So I'm just like the administrator. I take all the complaints, really. But <laughs> uh, we have two courses. We have Highland and Golf Course and Jay Gaither Golf Course, which is a nine nine hole golf course at a, at a different location. So I oversee both of those golf courses. I would say that we're people friendly. We're for everyone. We're affordable. We're in great shape. The best value there is in Tallahassee. Yeah, I mean it's it's I mean it's popular. The the, the people love it. It's it's probably the people's course here in Tallahassee. Yes. We are the busiest. We probably have about forty thousand rounds. What um, what brings people here? I think I think it's affordable. If we're in great shape. The conditions are, are just are perfect. I think the greens are nice and um, uh, we're affordable. It's not just flat up one way, back another. Uh, there were some really fun holes. You went uphill. You kind of came down around the hill. You had to work the ball in places, and there were some. There were some really fun shots. You wish that every city in the country had a place like Highland. That's Finnick, like, which we said about hey, rough around the edges, yeah. but we're gonna keep putting money into it. It's not perfect, never will be, but this is gonna get more people to play golf, and it's a great way to be outside. What's your What's your favorite part about this place? The people, yeah, yeah. I could even almost tear up about it. It's just because you know we get it's just a whole diverse diverse group of people and you know you got grumpy people you know and they end up loving them at the end of the day you know it's it's great we're all big family the, the greens at Heidelman were were really good especially considering uh i mean the people saw what was coming down out of the sky for the last like 24 yeah. hours not it might have been the quickest greens we played on the three days certainly yeah you know Killarn was underwater almost but Didn't really want to move back, did it? You had to go all right. Exactly where you did. That was terrible. <laughs> Can we talk about his move? His swing is a true, awesome. a true push draw. Like, and he had the nice. I mean, when he shot seventy three, like. And his like sleep. such a distracted. He was on a conference call for for three holes. DJ played a hole for him. <laughs> No, this is a first. <laughs> no one said what a cool camera. I want to handle. I want to handle that thing for a while. Two putters. Yeah, you, you know what we say, coach. If you have two putters, do you have one putter? You, you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> and I still have the legal amount of clubs in there, so that's not good. <laughs> you hit that red button when you want it to start and stop. Okay. That's it. All right, there's water right. down. There. No driver. How about just slap a little four iron down there? Does that work? Yeah. Okay. Oh gosh! I feel like if I make a birdie, I should. I think it's six bucks. Oh, get right. Guys, playing angles. Coach, y'all. It might be fine. Is it rolling? Ah, uh, it should be. Is it counting down on the bottom? Shot. He got it over the water. Let's see it, DJ. Let's see it. We're using one of Coach's many putters. <laughs> he, picked out, he picked out a good one for me. Uh, a little tester. A little tester last year. Oh. Woo. I needed that. I think you could have made three on that one. That was, that was a good hole to be tapped in. Used to be a belly putter? It did. It used to be a belly putter, as you can see. Nice little soft. No need for a new grip. Keep the same old grip on. <laughs> uh, I only play for you, coach. <laughs> you know, we have a fun, interesting walk here at Jack's Beach that it's the type of course where the shots you're hitting. It just keeps you engaged round after round. And I kind of felt that at Highland, where like the, the the dog legs and the up and down, I don't 
it would take a long time to really truly get like bored going around that, yeah. that place. There's some memorable shots like the approach to 18. That was awesome. Between the two trees. Pretty iconic shot here. 18 at High Limit. Really iconic. Like my my tee shot ended up in a perfect spot to thread thread it between the two, but if you're on the left side, it's like, oh, you had to hit it over oh, through the tree. Yeah, so like that shot's gonna be interesting every time you hit it because the, the angle's gonna be different. Oh! And then it is the other thing about the weather is like you can't feel your hands really. You're wearing you're either wearing weather gloves, which then you have zero touch, or you know, your hands are freezing. And then also the ball doesn't go anywhere. I don't know if I was playing like a waterlogged one I had to find because I ran out, but like, I just like, man, the ball is not leaving the ballpark today. And that just makes it hard to score. Well, when it's like 42 degrees. Yeah, your numbers are all off. Like, I guess I'll club up and you, it all doesn't uh, jump in that weather. Good play, man. Good trip. Yep, yep. Yep. Brother. Coach, thank you so Coach. much, man. That was fun. It was great meeting you. So it was kind of a trip of adversity. So it's hard. It's like hard to go out and be like, yeah, I'm going to shoot my, you know, like mega bonus wise. Like, yeah, let me go shoot a career load of that. Your course of handicap doesn't get weather adjusted. It doesn't. Yeah. So I think that was a tall order for the boys. I think we punched in and we punched out of Tallahassee with our heads held high. I, that's exactly right. You got any other questions for us? Tallahassee in general. You're, you're, how did your opinions Gosh. of Tallahassee? Form or change? I I thought Tallahassee was going to be very much Florida city, and I couldn't have been more wrong. It felt more southern city. I, I would put it like on that line with we were saying Greenville, Augusta, Georgia, Aiken. It struck me as the upstate of Florida. It was like low country in the hills. Like I was just not expecting it to be a hilly place. Tree city. It was just not what I expected at all. It had charm, yeah. state capital. It, it had a lot of cool things in its favor. State uh, capital is a lot of things that's not charming. Phallic. It's very phallic. <laughs> sure. It's very Bajas. It's very Eastern Bloc. I think we manufactured a run that this trip. You know, we had, we had to move the runner over. Uh, but that's what it's all about, man. That's what it's all about. Strap Boys got to get out there and we just got to just gotta experience it. But we played hard, but we didn't dominate. So hopefully we can get our heads in it for the next trip and we'll dominate. I think the next trip is Megabos is getting terminated with extreme prejudice. Lord willing. What do you mean? Do you think the C-suite's taking it away? No, I think you're going to blow out the O-ring. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, for sure. That was a good, he was being complimentary. Oh, I was like, what's yeah. the apocalypse about? now? Have you been thing. talking to Come those on. guys? What are you... All right, cut. Oh, yeah, good call. <laughs> <laughs>